friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on January 16th, 2024. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your world update, as well as space weather, earthquakes, volcanoes. Starting out here, always looking at imagery from SDO, Solar Dynamics Observatory. This is the last 48 hours on our sun. No major solar flares. Still watching some pretty large prominence in the southern hemisphere and as well along the equator. Look in the last 48 hours incoming. Pretty large plasma filament lifting from the surface around the equatorial region and as well in the north. Stay tuned because we're going to be keeping an eye on that large plasma filament right hand side. Having a look at outgoing here. We did have a couple backside CMEs from the outgoing sunspot regions. No major space weather events have been thwarted our way for January 16th. Having a look at multi-spectrum here, pointing out the major events. There's that large plasma filament erecting from the surface. And as well, we have two coronal hole regions. One is turning away right now and another one in the northern hemisphere getting ready for an earth-facing view. 171 angstroms here. Just another beautiful way to see our sun. If you enjoy these images, please don't forget to give a thumbs up. Get in the comment section. Let me know where you're watching from. And thank you so much for being a part of this family. Having a look right now, we have 10 sunspot regions on the Earth-facing disk on our sun. Notable there, some pretty big sunspot regions. Current space weather conditions, there are none to talk about. Solar winds are now coming in at 348 kilometers per second. And that's been steady slow. Solar X-ray flux showing not much at all. It's been pretty quiet here the last couple days. Minor C-class solar flare at best. But slight rise just recently could have something brewing. Solar proton flux is low. Geomagnetic activity is climbing up. That's probably due to the coronal hole that was Earth-facing. Having a look at the Space Weather Prediction Center app and Spiral, showing a little bit of space weather coming our way, but looks like it's going to be ducking south of our planet. Having a look at ISWA Space Prediction Spiral, there's the one CME taking off towards Mercury and as well Venus. And there was another one today, right there. And that took off towards Mars. But current space weather conditions are calm. Having a look at Lasco 3, showing the last 48 hours of imagery as we had two CMEs, both on the back side of our sun. And as well, lots of activity north and south pole yet again. And that seems to be re reoccurring here. Fli filaments lifting from the surface in the north and southern hemisphere. And then creating a huge coronal mass ejection. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours as that's pretty quiet as well. Pretty quiet update today. Not many earthquakes to report just under two or 180 earthquakes according to USGS, but notable earthquake here, Mina, Nevada, and as well, Clement, California, 4.4 off the coast there. Minor activity through Hawaii. Notable activity up into Alaska, northern Alaska, 4.4 there, Chignac, but 4.5 and multiple aftershocks through the region, northwest Alaska. Pretty deep earthquake here, Jirilsk, Russia, 4.5, and as well, lots of activity through the Philippines plate today, Batong, Indonesia, 5.1, as well, 4.6 here, and Bon, Indonesia, and that's right by Luatobi and Luatolo volcanoes that have been erupting all week. Here's our deepest earthquake, past 24 hours, 580 kilometer depth, Fiji. And the largest last 24 hours is this 5.4 that was reported in central Russia. As well, notable earthquake here, 5.0 in Greece. 
5.1 there, east of South Sandwich Islands, towards Easter Island. Not much to talk about. South American plate, north central. No notable earthquakes. But we'll give you a quick glance here at the last seven days for earthquakes around the world. And thank you so much for watching and inviting me into your living rooms or wherever you're watching from. I really appreciate you all. That's the last seven days for earthquakes. Lots of deep ones. As you can see, all the elevated rings are showing the depth of the earthquakes. Bit of a trifecta right now with our planet, Fiji, South America, and Afghanistan. Now let's get to the Pacific Disaster Center showing the most recent satellite imagery and as well pointing out the most recent volcanoes getting updated. Today we have Luatobi in Indonesia as well in Nevada's Daru is Colombia, Tacono in Indonesia. And then lots of flood alerts here across Africa. Trying to find the active volcanoes here. A long list, 220 hazards. Fuego, quite a few big eruptions today. Guatemala, Samaru in Indonesia. Popo in Mexico. Sabincaya in Peru. Marapi in Indonesia. Swiss and Najima in Japan. And of course, the Wreck Janes volcano, which erupted two days ago and ended up breaching the wall, burned a few homes, but luckily everybody was evacuated in time. Thoughts and prayers going out to everybody affected in Iceland. They've had quite a few years, quite a few rough years for eruptions. Having a look at satellite imagery, some pretty big systems moving across North America and through the Atlantic. Notable severe weather through uh, Central South America. Lingering low pressure systems across Northern Territory of Australia and as well tropical system here, Engrek in the Central Indian Ocean. And of course we have another tropical system here off the coast of Madagascar, Balal, tropical cyclone Balal, and that did come across the Reunion and Mauritius as a Category 3 hurricane, or Category 3 cyclone. So thoughts and prayers going out to everybody that was affected there as well. Strong winds, heavy rains. Now let's get to air quality. This is all brought to you by our volcanoes, showing the SO2 content forecast. Big eruption coming out of Peru and as well through southern Mexico. Popocerto and as well Fuego. And then overlooking the northern hemisphere and over Russia as most of the SO2 from the Iceland volcano went straight across the North Pole and right into the polar vortex and is already encompassing the planet. Overlooking Africa and Europe. No major volcanic eruptions to talk about except for the Iceland volcano, which they were expecting, and they built a, a defense wall to stop the lava from flowing to the city, and it helped, but not quite enough, as it did burn a few homes, but luckily, again, everybody got out in time. Now let's get to weather here, brought to you by windy.com, showing the next seven days weather forecast. Lots of systems moving into Europe this week, and as well, cold temperatures lingering low through the Mediterranean. And then long-range forecast, big strong system heading into parts of northern United Kingdom. And then sweeping eastward, overlooking North America. As we've got extreme cold warnings across eastern Canada now, it's starting to warm up in the west. But this low pressure system, most recent low pressure system, is going to be hanging around as it swings up into Hudson Bay and then swings back. Our next major system here will be coming in Sunday into Monday, 22nd for Ontario. 
And then extreme weather breaking out through the Gulf states, long range forecast before heading up into Ontario. And then overlooking Australia, Southeast Asia, and the North Pacific. Lingering a low pressure system across Northern Territory. That's been spinning now for the last seven days and it is set to continue here forecast not to leave the continent here. Not at all in this long range forecast. As you can see, another cyclone is developing for the eastern seaboard of Australia. Pretty strong low there, south of Tasmania and as well another low moving into New Zealand. But look at that low pressure system in Northern Territory, Australia. That thing has been spinning for days, bringing torrential rain and severe weather. So thoughts and prayers going out to everybody affected there. You've got a cyclone coming to the Northeast region, long range forecast. Overlooking Africa and parts of Europe. And look at this, we have one, two, three possible cyclones developing in this long range forecast. One of them lingering right over Madagascar, then possibly joining forces as it moves into the Indian Ocean. Now let's have a look at our temperature forecast for the next few days. As Europe will be experiencing some of that extreme cold weather, but not for long as we've still got a pretty strange jet stream going on in the Northern Hemisphere right now. Overlooking North America, you can see here enveloped into the deep freeze, minus 30 to minus 35 with the wind chill expected overnight tonight in Ontario. Warming up in the West. And then it looks like a long range forecast. We're gonna see this extreme cold coming back big system over the Hudson Bay. Always like to share the upper level winds here brought to you by Null School. This is showing our polar vortex right now, the shape of it, and as well its coordinates. Having a look at the equator versus the southern hemisphere. And I always like to give a comparison last year versus this year. So let's go back to 2023, January 16th. And that's what it looked like a year ago today. And this is what it looks like now. Much love everybody. And I appreciate you all being a part of this family and this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, please don't forget to give a like and maybe share with a friend and family this amazing channel, Keeping Humanity Aware and Prepared. Much love. There are some big changes coming to YouTube soon, so stay tuned. Come February, big changes coming. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily do. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.